What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Tactical Advantage. Um, today I'd like to kick off the first video in a short series looking at basically the fundamentals and, and core proficiencies of handgun marksmanship. Uh, these videos will act as a primer to some exciting new projects and reviews that we have coming down the pike in the very near future on Tactical Advantage. <coughs> um, today, we'll basically be talking about the abundance of handgun sights out there as well as touching on proper sight alignment and sight picture. As I'm sure everyone's aware of, the old staple of notch and blade and notch and post sights is really a proven method that's been around as long as there's been firearms. Uh, these are definitely effective, easy to use, and there's not a lot of novelty, as this is designed to simply do its job. In the last 30 years or so, there have been a lot of changes and in innovators coming to market with different variants of handgun sights to solve as many issues as there are shooters. Uh, you have the night sights or the tritium sights. Uh, these are basically sights that emit their own light by utilizing a radioactive isotope, which is a derivative of hydrogen or some other photoluminescent material. Uh, you have some big players in this market, such as Trijicon and Meprolite. Uh, Glock as well is, is a great manufacturer of night sights. Uh, all of these companies make outstanding products which are widely used by OEM firearms and readily accepted in the military and law enforcement applications. Uh, next we move into what I like to think of as sport shooting sights, uh, which may be a generalization of sorts, but I think it fits. Uh, these sights are usually developed to address concerns brought up by competition shooters and other people who have a hard time acquiring sights easily or effectively on the action shooting circuit or an accuracy competition. Uh, this is where you'll find adjustable sights like the Bomar, uh, boutique sights like the Heine Straight 8s, which I'm a particular fan of, actually. Um, many find these types of sights are attractive because they're very familiar. Uh, they're usually found on 1911s or, or other guns that have significant exposure to, to shooters of different levels throughout their careers and their interactions with firearms. Um, then there are some of the newer variants which utilize a, a filament or other tool to gather as much light or create as much recognizable deviation between the front and rear sight uh, to assist in speed of acquisition. Uh, some of the players in this segment are Excess, uh, Advantage Tactical comes to mind. Uh, both of these companies have novel offerings and really do seem to improve the speed and accuracy with some shooters. Uh, there's also the Ghost Ring sights that seem to assist some shooters in gaining improved acquisition time, but in my opinion there's a diminishing return there. Uh, what you gain in speed of acquisition I, I think you lose to the variable of accuracy with just how the Ghost Ring functions. Um, with that brief explanation of some of the sites out there, let's jump into how sites work in the most basic of terms. The use of the notch and blade sites really boils down to matching up geometric shapes in a manner that allows the projectile to reliably contact the target where the shooter intends. You can see from the illustration the alignment on the front sight post can cause significant changes in bullet impact. Either vertical or horizontal misalignment can have tremendous effect on accuracy as a shooter. Uh, this type of design nearly 100% of the time requires the operator to have the center post or the blade lined up flush and level with the rear sight while having equal distance on either side of the front sight post in relation to the rear sight notch. Resulting in the dots of the sights, if so equipped, to create basically a level trio of dots. Sounds simple, right? Well, not so much in application. Though there are several other variables which can adversely affect accuracy, poor sight alignment is usually a likely culprit when working through issues relating to proficiency and accuracy. Uh, next, there's the application of acquiring a sight picture. 
I found this is one of the hardest things to teach a new shooter. Uh, the, the human eye has trouble focusing on several items that are on different planes or at different distances. Uh, it's just not built to do that. Uh, the normal method of developing a sight picture is to bring the firearm on target with the eye firmly focused on the front sight and allow the rear sight and target to become relatively blurred. Uh, thus focusing the shooter's attention on the front sight which generally causes the most deviation in a shot placement. Uh, you can see from the visual that this is easily understandable but somewhat hard to teach in concept to a new shooter. Uh, with that being said, it, that's why it always is helpful to have some kind of aid or something a new shooter can see and understand, even if it's two pieces of notebook paper, to help them understand this concept. Uh, as well as level and, and flush uh, side alignment. Well, with all that being said, now we can take a brief moment to talk about holds. Holds, in general, are, are a shooter preference and more the result of knowing your likes and dislikes and being familiar with your platform. Uh, there's the center hold, which is basically placing your front sight directly in line with the portion of the target you'd like to engage. Uh, I found in competition that this hold is usually not the one utilized. Uh, in accuracy events, this hold sometimes causes sight blindness by blending the darker portion of the post into the darker portion of the target, which adversely impacts accuracy when people are, are going for extreme accuracy events. Uh, it causes slight deviation in impact, basically, and it can affect your scores. Uh, there's also the 6 o'clock hold which puts the apex of the sight directly underneath the desired point of impact. Uh, this is usually a faster method when working in situations where speed is more important than pinpoint accuracy. Uh, next we'll look at a final il illustration of holes which shows the center mass or center hold again, the 6 o'clock hold, and the sub 6. Uh, all of these are really shooter preference. Uh, it needs to be investigated by a shooter to find out what works for them for their particular application of shooting. Well, with that being said, uh, that's about it for our short dive into pistol sights. Stay tuned over the next few weeks for some in-depth testing on several kinds of sights from different manufacturers, uh, which will test for accuracy, speed, reliability, and value. Uh, I look forward to sharing those videos with you guys, so thanks for watching.